goodness. I've been employed for the last nine and a half years, nine years, nine or ten, which is amazing. See toys? Okay, there. Okay, the toys. Oh, you're gonna knock that. Oh. I love having rabbits. I grew up with dogs and rabbits, and we've had a cat in the past, but I adore rabbits. They're very, very quiet. They're extremely affectionate. Uh, you don't have to walk them, uh, and uh, they're just nice little things to have around. They communicate very, very well. They're cute, uh, cuddly, everything you want in a pet. The rabbit's habits just in general make it the ideal person or pet for somebody who's working. It generally likes to sleep during the day and it likes to have time from dusk until you know the time you go to bed that it would really play. So the time that you're home would be the time that the rabbit wants to be the most active. I think rabbits are actually capturing more attention with people. I think they are on the uprise for I want to say adopting. I hate to think people are going to the pet store. Um, I just, they're inquisitive. They have such a great personality. They, they are friendly. Some of them um, like to be held, like to lay on your lap, like to sit on the couch with you. Others are just very aloof and they wanna, want to be out to play. And if you have proper toys, you know, for the rabbit, um, they can entertain themselves for long periods of time. They don't meow and they don't bark uh, and they don't smell. And the only thing that smells really is the food we give them. Uh, broccoli and the pellets and all that stuff. Uh, they, they preen themselves like cats. They're, they're very clean as far as their bodies are concerned. I've had all kinds of animals my whole life and dogs, cats, and rabbits. When I got rabbits I just thought there's no going back to any other kind of animal. They're the best of both animals. They are fun and loving and happy like dogs but they don't make noise like barking and you don't have to take them out all the time. Um, they're not as aloof as cats, although they are more like cats as far as a pet living in your house. They can be litter trained. They bathe themselves or clean themselves. You, you do have to brush them and take care of them, clip their toenails. But I just thought that they were the best of both animals, a combination of the dog and the cat. And they're a lot more fun to watch and they're so precious. Everyone who comes over just is amazed. You have bunnies and they live in your house? They're just amazed by that instead of having them live in a cage. And my response is, Whoever said that a dog has to live in the backyard, a cat has to live inside your home, and a bunny has to live in a hutch in the backyard, in a cage. That's the way most of them live, unfortunately, but that's not the way they have to. There are a lot of house dogs, and there are more and more house rabbits. You wouldn't believe how it's just exploding. The House Rabbit Society has several kinds of volunteer positions, and you can be a fosterer, but if you're a fosterer, what you do is a lot of shelters won't keep rabbits much longer than a week or until they don't have room anymore or they have a certain amount of time and then they're euthanized. If you're a fosterer, you take bunnies from the shelter and then try to adopt them out of your home. But I didn't, first of all, I didn't want a lot of people coming to my house all the time. 
Plus, once I get a bunny in my house or any animal, I don't want somebody else to take them. I, I want them. I bond with them and, you know, there are just different reasons why somebody might not want to adopt. So the House Rabbit Society does have this other thing called sanctuary. And I thought, oh, I think I'll be a sanctuary. And so w most of the bunnies I have right now came from a Madison area House Rabbit Society foster home. And for some reason, they weren't adopted. Currently, I have 14 rabbits. Um, actually, I was up to 15. And then um, three and a half weeks ago, one of ours just passed. So 15 was my all-time high. The first one, the pet store rabbit, Wee Willie, I got in July of 1991. And this being 2002, it, it took just shy of 11 years to get up to 15 rabbits. I think my all-time high was I adopted four in one year. But I guess the real reason we ended up with rabbits is my husband is allergic to dogs and uh, one of our daughters is very allergic to cats and so we wanted a pet that we could cuddle and love. We're not into snakes and fish. So we decided to get a little bunny. Alice has a her regular, like a bunny cage that we have and we found out when we had our other rabbits that we let them wander a room that we could shut off in the apartment. Well, when we moved here, we wanted something a little bit more confined because we do have a dog now, uh, just to make sure when we weren't home that something didn't go wrong. So we got a bunny or a puppy training pen that we've attached to her cage now, and we leave the door open, and she can get out into that training pen. Buster was at a garage sale, and uh, I went over to tell this lady about the House Rabbit Society, uh, and she said he was for sale, so I wanted to rescue him, so I bought him for five bucks, and I brought him home. I had him for five wonderful years, and he lived in the house with me. Um, and then when he passed away, I was really sad. And one day, about a month afterwards, I went to the Humane Society just to be around animals. I didn't plan on adopting anyone. Well, it turns out that this trio was there, and they'd been there for a while, and there was a rumor that they were going to have to split them up in order to get them adopted because no one was going to take all three. It's a ready-made family. I thought, I'll take them. No problem. No problem, so I brought them home, and there's a big difference between having one bunny and having three bunnies, but it's not, it's not a bad difference. The difference is it's a little more work and, and a little more food. It's a lot more fun because they interact with each other and they play with each other. I mean, it's just hysterical all the time. My bunnies live in the kitchen, and I do slide a cardboard as a doorway to keep them in there overnight and when I'm gone, just in case so that they aren't running around the whole house. But I let them out whenever possible, um, and they just seem to enjoy a change of scenery. They love being in the kitchen, and that's their home, and that's where their food and their treats and their toys are. But you wouldn't believe how often they come into the living room, and it's not to tear up the furniture. It's not to get into any trouble. They just want a change of scenery. And they just come into another room, and they'll sit down on a, on a carpet or a rug, and they'll just sit there and relax and rest, just like people want to get out of a, a one room and go into another one. Psychologically, I think my bunnies know that they're free. There's no cage, and when I open up the kitchen door, they come out into the living room. They just want to know that they can go where they want and that they're not being caged up. I think maybe because they lived in a cage, that they just feel better knowing that they're free. And I like that idea, and that's why I like bunnies being in a house instead of outside. They're free. And a lot of times they will come into a room that I'm in and I think it's just because they want to be around me or around human beings because they interact, they're so sociable. I would say a roomy cage for a medium-sized rabbit is probably about a two by three foot cage. Um, rabbits should not be caged all the time though. They need to come out and exercise. They need to exercise and socialize for uh, social reasons and also for health reasons. They need to exercise to keep their digestive system moving and to keep their weight down and all of that. Bunny people have all sorts of strange arrangements. You'll notice that almost every room in my house has a gate on it. And oftentimes I've tacked little strips of pine board around the baseboard because they would prefer to eat something that's jutting out. And I'd rather have them eat plain pine than painted molding. These are house rabbits and they live in this room. When we brought Rocky home on the night we bought him, we uh, watched him just go very methodically around the baseboards and uh, scent the baseboards and mark his territory and he very rarely leaves this room. When we first got Usagi, 
he used to venture out into other parts of the house, into our kitchen, living room, dining room, uh, but he uh, stopped doing that and they basically stay in this room. We have a little powder room close by and at first Rocky used to come in there every morning with me when I put my makeup on. When we first got Rocky, we did buy a cage and we would uh, let him have roam the room during the day and we would put him in the cage at night. Uh, although he let us know that uh, he didn't want to go in the cage because it became increasingly difficult to catch him at night to put him in the ca cage and it was pretty funny. We're all down crawling and <laughs> we're trying to trap him. It was actually pretty comical and I looked at Wayne one night I said this is ridiculous. Let's put the cage up in the attic. So I guess Rocky taught us that maybe uh, rabbits shouldn't be caged. There are many, many problems with cages. Uh, if it's a wire bottom cage, which is the most practical, just because there's a tray that comes out below that that you can clean easily and everything does drop through. If the rabbit's of any size and is sitting on there, they can get um, wire burns on their, their feet and their legs. At one point we had five Humane Society bunnies and three bunny stations, two mated pairs and our single deaf bunny. That is a lot of work, and I don't use cages for the animals. They have their own space, and for me, the space is a bedroom. As my children moved up and out, the bunnies took over. I think that the animals enjoy a wonderful quality of life when they're able to run up ramps, go into tunnels, run around the room, up onto the bed. They just have such a good time and, and once they leave the cage, when I first bring them home, they usually don't go back. Depending on the rabbits, some of them are getting out quite frequently and I, I tend to keep a calendar going in my kitchen and it, just like at the Humane Society, they kind of tend to keep track of who's out when so that you're doing it in a fair manner. I tend to do like a rotation schedule and I just keep track of who's out and if it's for several hours, then I try to keep track of, you know, how long they're out and everything. And boy, they love their time out, that's for sure. Rabbits by nature are very curious and intelligent creatures, and they become very bored being in a cage without any toys and activity. I myself don't like putting anyone in a cage. I've seen how much they enjoy being out and moving from one spot to another, or at least having that option. So I prefer to pen them off in a bunny-proof room. Obviously, my older guys don't get around quite so much. But there are other ways to go, too. Rather than having a cage, you can do a puppy exercise pen, or you can make a built-in pen. And even if you have like a carpeted floor where they do tend to pull carpeting out, you could put a scrap of vinyl flooring down, put the pen up on top of that, and that gives them a little more room. It's so important to to find a vet that doesn't just do dogs and cats. Um, just basically because there are special needs that come up with the rabbits that you don't see in, um, in a dog or cat. The best intention vets who just aren't experienced with rabbits uh, may be transferring canine and feline um, medicine and treatment to rabbits and it could, a lot of times it can actually kill them. And I stumbled across Diane Bennett's and when, when she matched my folder's worth of stuff with a stack of her own higher than mine, I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> and she asked to borrow my stuff. She didn't know about the House Rabbit Society. I thought, okay, she's the one. <laughs> there aren't really any courses specifically for learning rabbit medicine. I learned a lot of my rabbit care just from the actual experience of owning rabbits. Also, I have learned a lot even from the House Rabbit Society. They publish a lot of information on, on rabbits in their journals and newsletters, and, and that's really helped me too. Okay. Chloe has and moved in with Jasper. Jasper. I have to keep everybody straight. These two have been together for about three years. Anya's become a nice bunny. She's settling down. She's non. The males seem to drive the females away. And so if she really wants to be friends with me, then she has to be um, careful of him because he'll nip, he'll chase her away. That's what they do. And it's right. really hard to keep track of what the females are doing and how they're feeling. Yes. Maybe we could get her out and we'll take a look at her. Okay. Yeah, 
have a previous blue check himself. Do you want to scale here, miss? Mm, zero. into the air. Um, that the stasis could be a, a, a secondary symptom Absolutely. of something else. I thought I'd better get her in here. Yes. Well, perhaps we could slide her up here a little bit. Look at those feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think gorgeous as they are. They are so big. Mm -hmm. Lovely. This side is good. The teeth are good. They're white. They're not ridged and not pointy. Her weight is at was actually down a pound. We have sort of non-specific signs too. It's important to make sure that we don't feel any abscesses any place. Those are very subtle and hidden problems sometimes. She did have a fair amount of wax in her ears, but it didn't look to be purulent. It was more regular wax. What a good girl, Anya. Oh, dear, Anya. Well, do some blood work and x-rays. No, she's, she's been known to look off examining tables. All right. Okay. Explosive. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Hey. Mm. There's a... Uh, I have lots of blood vessels in their ear, and they'll stick out better when I get some light underneath them. So I don't know. I'm gonna try to get the blood from that big central artery right there. Putting the blood in two different tubes, this purple top tube as an anticoagulant, um, so the blood won't clot in here, and it helps us look at the different cells in the blood. And this tube, the blood will clot into, and there's a silic silicon gel in the bottom that will separate out the serum um, for uh, looking at the chemistry of the blood. Yeah, I'm just holding her ear mm -hmm. to stop the bleeding. It's not clotting yet, though. <laughs> Unlike human x-rays, we can't leave the room when we snap x-ray because we're holding animals. <laughs> okay, we're just making a label that will show up on the x-ray with her name on it. Whoa. Jumpy, jumpy. She's jumpy. So we do two views, usually. They're lateral on their side. And then a VD when they're on the back. We need to measure to see how we need to set the strength of the x-ray. It's nine centimeters on her side. This is a little trickier because the bunnies don't like to be on their back anyway. Did you turn it up? Huh? Turned up? No. Oh, okay. That's right. I think it'll be okay. I think it should be pretty square. Fingers under there. Do you want me to calm these down? Okay. lying on her side, relatively. All the little black spots are little gas pockets, but none of them are significant. 
It will be interesting to get her blood work back. This almost looks as though she may have some tiny little stones or calcifications in her kidneys. Spaying and neutering is very important for all animals, largely for population control. There's tremendous overpopulation of cats and dogs and uh, for rabbits in specific, the uh, neutering surgery and spaying surgery is important in helping to control certain unwanted behaviors that rabbits would have accentuated if they, if they weren't spayed and neutered. It's a little trickier to perform a spay operation on, on a rabbit, but experienced vets know how to do it and would also highly recommend doing it because there's a huge cancer rate in unspayed females. I'm a big advocate of, you know, adopting from a shelter. I also belong to the House Rabbit Society, so if people would want to get in touch with the House Rabbit Society and adopt through the foster homes, my attitude is save a life. Whether it's a dog, a cat, a small caged animal, anything the shelters have, I would rather see, you know, saving a life than ever going to a breeder or, you know, a pet store. The Wisconsin Humane Society moved to a new facility a couple of years ago, and compared to the old building, this new one is absolutely deluxe. It's much larger, and I think it's interesting that the animals have the perimeter of the building, so they have the windows, and the humans have the offices that have no <laughs> windows. They're in the middle, and I think that that's kind of telling. I wish the bunnies had even a bigger area, but it, that space got cut into a little bit when they decided to put the retail store, the Animal Antics, right next door to there. But there is a small room adjacent to the uh, bank of rabbit cages that is for socializing bunnies. They can get out of their cage and interact with people in there, but if they really want to run, we like to take them back to the doggy day spa where there's a much larger area. There are hardly ever any dogs in the day spa. They do use those bathtubs usually early in the morning or later in the evening, but it's often available, so we like to uh, take them back there. And I'm real happy that um, finally, after the, the Humane Society went for the idea of us having a socialization program for the small guys and started advertising for volunteers for that, We've been holding at about 25 volunteers who come in and do take the bunnies out uh, one by one, or if it's a bonded couple that's come in, they take them in, usually in the small room, so that when clients or potential adopters come in, they can see the rabbits out of their cage running around using the kinds of toys that bunnies like to play with, and they can kind of go in there too and interact with them. A month ago, one of our little guys lost his mate. Um, she died suddenly. They had been a very affectionate, very loving couple. And I thought that maybe I could introduce him to our deaf bunny. They, they've been aware of each other, but I didn't know how receptive she would be because she is deaf. She's more skittish. I didn't think she would be able to relate to a male. Uh, especially being herded and being uh, bossed around. After a number of weeks working with the two animals, uh, my little guy was, was very receptive and the female was quite interested. She expressed a lot of interest in going in, in his room, investigating the territory, and pretty soon she was just in there to stay. TV. I don't read. I don't knit. You sit here and play with them. All right, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. So you know she's not getting out here. She put it by. She's in these balls. I right am now. pleased to see her with her own species, not just having me to keep her company. She still plays with me. We'll see if he um, 
if he allows her to do that, because often the males get very, very protective of the females. They are both enjoying each other, and uh, I think they're better off together. The dog and the rabbit get along famously, and it's an old dog uh, that's nearly blind, but they love to sit together. And even when the rabbit is in her pen, she'll be on one side of it, and he'll be on the other side of the little penned area, and sit together with noses touching and everything else. So they're, they're very good friends. Britt's my oldest bunny, and she's actually 13 and a half years old now. I've only had her for about 10 years. One of my rabbits died, so I had room for another one. And Julie said, okay, you can have Britt, or you can have this other one who had been returned. And I said, I'll take Britt. Nobody's going to adopt her. Of course I'll take her. And people would come over. They were afraid to go near her. They were terrified of her, and I, I could see why. I didn't care, though. I was, I, I didn't like being bit and, and lunged at and scratched, but I didn't really care. I thought she needed me to just, no matter what, show her affection. So I did that. And gradually she came around and started being less aggressive and really trusting me. Well, now she's 13 and a half, and she's become a very, very special rabbit to me. She would, you know, in her younger days before she had arthritis so bad, she would come around and hop and hop and hop, jump up on the couch with me, lay on top of me, then jump off, run around some more. And now she loves to come out and sit with me, but she just, you know, she has arthritis, she can't get around. But she does still respond real well to being uh, given the attention that any little queen bee deserves. It's an eight to 10 year commitment. And if I've got one coming up on 11 years old and I don't know how long she'll go, they can live beyond. And that's the misnomer. So many people go out at Easter time and will buy one at a pet store and give it to a two or three or four year old child. Not only do they lose interest, they have no concept in how to care for it. They just want to know what's going on. They have to be involved with everybody and everything. They have to be in the same room as you and they have to get your attention. They're just very inquisitive, very nosy and funny. They're just hysterical. They're the best animal. I, once you have a bunny, you can never go back. I think they're magical. I think that not their feet have charm, but their whole selves have charm. They are just bunny magic. <laughs>